Hi, everybody. Wow, what a great morning it is to see so many beautiful faces of Slow Flowers friends around the country. I'm just thrilled. And, and uh, I wanted to show off my outfit today. You see I'm wearing <laughs> pearls. I'm Deborah Prinzing. You may know that. Um, I have this great shirt, Keep Calm and Flower On. It's my royal shirt that our friends at Harmony Harvest Farm just sent me yesterday and it said, uh, we think you, you might need this. <laughs> so I don't know if uh, Jessica is, or Stephanie are on the call, but um, shout out and thank you to them for the wonderful gift. Uh, you guys, this is great. We've managed to get to this uh, Zoom platform two weeks in a row and we're getting a little better. And one of the things that we're uh, doing is um, Karen, our, our, um, wonderful event manager is keeping everybody on mute right now because we had a lot of uh, ambient noise last week and we're just trying to, if you don't mind, keep you on mute unless um, Lisa calls on you to ask a question. But you can post all your questions in the Zoom group chat. And please do that and say hi because um, we're, we're gonna keep a script of that and make sure we know who's on the call for our giveaways. Um, and also at the top, where, where you're listed in the participant screen, if your name isn't showing up, if it just says iPhone or something, please put your business name in there. Uh, you can just hover over the, um, your name, like where it says Rain Grace Hoke, she's done it right. You could hover and click more and, re <laughs> and rename yourself. Um, and the only reason we want you to do that is so that you, we had a lot last week that just said iPhone and we didn't know who they were and, and you missed out on the drawing. <laughs> Um, okay, so Lisa, is there a raise hand option that we want people to know about or are we going to just have people put their questions in the group chat? They can just pop them in the chat and I will keep track. Great, great. I'm going to just introduce our, our team and our guests today. Uh, first of all, you just heard from Lisa Watt, our membership manager. I don't know if she's on the screen or if she's showing up as, oh, there you are, Lisa. Hi. Uh, in the tan jacket. And then we have um, Nisha Blancas in the bright red uh, jacket. She's our social media maven. Uh, Karen Thornton, our um, business membership, our business and event manager, and I don't know, she just keeps things straight, is uh, anonymous today as Avenue 22, an event company. So <laughs> thank you, Karen. And then we have, yeah. two, we have two special guests. We have Missy Palakal of Missy Palakal Photography and the Calix Group. She's gonna be our first presenter. And then we have Amelia Ilo of Rooted Farmers and she's gonna be our right. second presenter. Um, so we announced on Wednesday in the Slow Flowers podcast, uh, well, what happened was in the Slow Flowers podcast, I had Tammy Myers on as a guest. Wow. And Tammy is um, a, basically a, a local Seattle floral fanatic who has started a business rebranded as Laura Bloom. And she, we were talking about just the frustration she was having of getting focused during this COVID era. And she pulled up a, um, a social media strategy guide that our friend Missy Palakal had created through her consulting business, Calix Group, and it was a year old. And Tammy's like, you know, said, I'm just going to use this and I think it's going to really help me get myself focused. So we called Missy and said, hey, can we share this? Well, not only did she say yes, she also decided to create a 30-day guide for helping people just get a little bit of a calendar on their social media. So Missy, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us. And um, can you just tell us a little bit, of, I'm gonna put two things up on the screen, Missy's website, okay. and then also one screenshot of, of the PDF. But Missy, uh, thank you for joining us. Can you just talk a little bit about the top line points that you wanna share relating to encouraging people to just give themselves a little bit of structure in this crazy time? Yeah, of course. So morning everyone and happy uh, Flower Friday in the social media world. Um, Thank you for giving me an excuse to brush my hair today. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I feel like my hair has been in a bun for a month. So thank you. Um, yeah. So, so first of all, Calix group, uh, I, I think actually a lot might, might recognize me as a photographer, uh, right. but I have a consulting business, uh, that I have a business partner with and, um, what Calix group is, is we're a, we're a two woman team. And we offer marketing and branding and business acceleration services to um, anything from large companies down uh, entrepreneurs like you guys. So as Deborah, 
um, this is our site you're looking at. And we created a 30-day uh, action guide for all of you to be able to reference any point in time if you're struggling with what to talk about right now. Um, this is our website that you can go and get it at. Deborah, are you able to, or who's controlling screen? Would you be able to the slides so I can talk through that as well? Got it. Uh, Missy, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear what you were asking me to do. Oh, sorry. I was wondering if you could actually pull up the guide. Yep, I'll pull it up while you're talking. Okay, perfect. Yeah, guide. Um, it's a pretty, hopefully, easy to digest and basic guide. Um, at the end, of it, there's a 30-day list of prompts that you can, you can tell those prompts have been tailored to the month of April. Um, as you know, that COVID isn't anytime soon, so we wanted to give you guys at least 30 days speaking points if you're feeling lost right now like those are. And then we also took the moment, uh, took a moment to answer uh, two burning questions. I think a lot of business owners are struggling. struggling with. Um, the first one, um, if you want social media and, uh, oh, can you guys hear me? Is this, it said connection unstable. Is that me or are you yeah. guys? You can hear me? Okay. I can hear you right now, Missy. Okay, perfect. So, so a couple of burning questions that a lot of businesses have is the first one is, you know, should I, should I continue to promote my um, business on social media? And for us, the short answer is yeah. Um, what you're seeing right now is there are tons and tons of people in the community on social media. And, and by promote, necessarily saying that you need to promote a, a product or a service. I, kn I know that your guys' um, have been kind of hindered by everything that's going on. But the, the, what you can do is just continue to show up every single day as much as possible. Um, Facebook and Instagram, they just recently released some information saying that uh, I think this was just last week that um, uh, 70 percent more users on on their platforms right now. So that means that's where people are at because it's like us in this virtual meeting right now. People are looking for that. So I think it's our duty as a owner to continue to provide that social connection as much as you, even if you don't have anything that you can physically offer them right now. Um, the first question I was definitely continue to show up as much as possible. Um, the second question that we keep getting asked about is how, how can I do this? Um, again, I know that many of you product or service that maybe you can provide at the moment. Um, but I, I mean, and for me too, as a photographer, um, I'm considered a non-essential uh, business. I can't really do a lot of work right now um, with my clients, but many other ways that you can stay connected with people and um, I think that one of the ways I'm, I'm continuing to, to build deep relationships and foster through those with my clients is I've taken a look at who my audience is. And for me, a lot of them are moms. Um, I'm sure there's moms on here too. And what I've done is started to share um, just tips and tricks about how I'm keeping my two and a half year old busy right now. Um, my husband blew up a pool, our summer pool that we usually put in the backyard, and he put it in our living room and he put all my kids' toys in it along with some balls. And that got a lot of attention from a lot of my audience members and reminded them that I'm still here. I'm still in this with them. And so being a creative person for all of us in the industry and just thinking about what is relevant right now, even if I don't have a specific product to service people with, still relevant to my audience and what could they use and find valuable and sharing that and one way you can stay connected. Um, there's several other ways. I think what Deborah's doing here and has created a virtual meetup for everyone to stay connected and continue to build that community is a great way. Um, yeah, so. You want me to question? scroll down? Missy, you want me to scroll down to the actual calendar? Sure, yeah. and. Well, let's get a screenshot here so people can find you. <laughs> <laughs> We've put a link to this uh, 
free PDF in the um, in the notes in the right column, so everybody can uh, take a look at it. But I was really impressed by the thirty day prompts, thirty days of prompts, Missy. Like this, yeah. This is broad enough that I think anybody can um, have fun with it. And we are on. I guess we're on April third, so introducing ourselves is a great. Today's a great day to do that. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. Today's the whole intro or Friday introduction in the social media world. Take advantage of it. Ride the coattails. Tons of other business owners who are going to be eating themselves, and this is also a way that you can collaborate and continue connect to connect with people, um, and maybe even draw a new audience in, so that when this whole COVID-19 thing passes, you actually are setting yourself up to have a new audience. Mm -hmm. um, okay, listen, this is available to everybody. If we, if it's successful, we might ask Missy and uh, Kalisa to do 30 days or 31 days for May. Uh, and share that with us. But um, the Calyx group, uh, they're good friends of Slow Flowers. Missy does a ton of photography for Slow Flowers for me and for some of our members. She was a, she and Kalisa were speakers at the Slow Flowers Summit last year. And um, we just wanna, we wanna share their wonderful gift that they've given us to help people, um, you know, just get going on a, on some kind of structure in their lives, in, in, any of us, if we all need this. So I'm gonna stop uh, right now and see if any, are there any questions, Lisa, for Missy? And I'm gonna close this out, I think, so I can get back to the big screen. I don't see any questions in the chat um, from Missy, but I do think um, if, if I could put in my two cents, I think this is such a great thing. Um, you know, they're, they're we're all in this together and it's really nice when you can feel like you are uh, working on some it's on folks uh, on things with folks um, in a collaborative way, even though we can't be together physically. I love the 30 days. Yeah. Great. Um, I guess my, I have one question for, um, for Missy and that is, uh, do you see, any difference between how Facebook is, you know, connecting with people and Instagram is connecting with people in terms of your, how you're um, engaging with your audience and that any advice for us on that? I'm kind of, I mean, it, it really kind of depends on who your audience is. Seeing, I'm seeing a similar reaction, but I will say this. Um, I, so with Facebook, um, I'm actually seeing a little bit more engagement right now and and that's because for, at least for, I know that my audience members um, are are mostly mothers um, on Facebook and they're between the ages of 30 and 45 for me and so for post especially relevant content for them and for my photography uh, doing relevant content for them about um, what I with my child right now to keep them entertained or you know how I'm handling things as a mom um, has has really gotten their attention. So, it, so for me, Facebook is actually working a little bit better than Instagram. I, I will also say this though, um, because user percentage is higher, um, I will I would recommend um, being a little aggressive if you want to be seen in, in especially in Instagram. Um, this might be a time where I know I give you guys all one prompt every day, um, but. If you can think of other topics to, to post, I, I would maybe recommend posting times a day right, right now. And that is because there's there's more users on there. So it's you, you can think, think about your own algorithm and you don't see everybody all the time that you follow. It's getting a little diluted. Uh, that's, one, that's one change that I've seen in the recent week or so, is that my Instagram aren't necessarily as far as they want to So if you can post even more than once, go for it. And definitely use all the features that you that you know about, especially on Instagram, um, whether it's stories or you know going with um, IGTV, anything you can do there. Is, uh, Missy, this is Deborah. You cut out when you said how many times a day somebody said that they couldn't hear it. Oh, sorry. If if you can post, um, if you have the energy and you can be aggressive, post multiple times a day, two, three times a day. Um, I recommend it um, just because there are so many more users on the it is a little bit for those to get that now. Okay, I think there's some questions. I'm gonna let Lisa read them to you and, and if she can tell who they're from, she'll identify that. I have um, from Sylvia, um, any tips on generating revenue uh, from social media at this time? Yeah, I mean, I've 
Yeah, okay, so I was telling Tammy the other day, I saw some, um, or I heard about something interesting. I really, I, I knew the name of this restaurant so we could all go see it, but I definitely not stop promoting. Um, if you have something, I, you might need to tweak your words. Definitely recommend do not call anything like the kind pandemic sale, sale. like, <laughs> you know, don't go out there and be like, I have a COVID-19 sale for everybody. That seems a little insensitive. Um, I think it's more about the tone and how you approach people with it. Um, in the guide, we, we recommended um, you might need to reevaluate your offers and you might need to consider seeing more discounts. Um, if you can offer that, maybe it's a, a pay what you can afford type of model. Um, but then I've also seen on the opposite end of that, people not reduce but creating these really beefy packages. So going to the restaurant, I was saying, um, I guess there was a Mexican restaurant somewhere in the United States that they, they're typically $20 a plate, right? Well, during this whole time, and because a restaurant is closed, apparently they sold a huge beefy pack where they said, you're going to get $2,000, a $2,000 gift card worth of food for $1,500 that you can use at any time once our restaurant reopens. And we're giving you a happy hour discount at any time of the day in order for you to come back and saying that their sales through the roof. Mm. That was one model and way that they are keeping their business sustained right now, especially because their local neighborhood really is in the restaurants. So I thought that was interesting. I think that all of us, like even in the flower industry, there could possibly be a way that you could still even offer a package and say, when this is all over with, you know, here's, here's six months worth of flower delivery. Uh, for when this is all over with and you, you're going to need those flowers um, if you can't provide that right now. Okay, thanks. Um, any other questions, Lisa, that you see that you want to um, bring up? Yeah, uh, Sylvia um, mentioned um, if we could hear you talk a little bit about using uh, Instagram Live. Um, yeah, so how, like a how to or, or, or right. maybe, maybe rules of, of like best practices? Yeah, some tips. Truthfully, just do it. <laughs> um, okay, so here's another interesting thing too. I think um, I, you just got to get on. You just got to be comfortable. If you're sure what to talk about, um, one thing I always tell people is think about what is one thing you get asked them, right? Is there, is there, a, is there an easy tip you can share or think of all your FAQs that your customers constantly ask you, just get on and just say, hey, I'm so-and-so with this business and this is my number one question that I get asked and I thought I'd talk about it with you today. I've, uh, it just takes a little bit of courage. Maybe since we're all at home, you can open up your cupboard and get some liquid courage. <laughs> <laughs> um, just do it. I mean, I, I you know, check out, uh, his music's not for everyone, but there's a DJ out there. I don't know if um, everyone's heard of him called D Nice. Um, you can follow him at D and then the word nice together. Um, Michelle, so he is constantly having these, um, these like online virtual dance parties and like Michelle Obama has shown up, Oprah has shown up. So, and he's just standing in front of his turntable. So that's cool. I think, there was, uh, I think there was one other question that was about, um, uh, from, let's see. There was a question from Borello Bozzi about oh. seeing regular engagement down, but uh, I was messaging with her and um, it sounds like maybe Missy answered that. Okay. Uh, unless you have anything more to say about that, uh, Missy. Yeah, um, I would say, yeah, just, it's a little bit down. Try and post a little more than once if you can. Um, and just really check your hashtags. Um, I, that's a whole nother topic that I could talk about forever, so I won't go into it. And, and for those of you that do have questions about hashtag or maybe want to become more proficient, um, I know our email address is doc um, or ways you can reach out, and I'd be more than happy to sit down with you. We are offering a, a 30 minute free presentation that I would say everyone take advantage of it. And my business partner and I are really nice people, and I bet you'll be on the phone with us for 30 minutes if you really want a lot of. Faith. Um, so I can definitely go into hashtag, uh, you know, best practices, um, or I can create, um, and that helps your community too. Yep. Thanks, Missy. Here's just the link again, calixgroup.com. You just need to fill out. Am I sharing this? Can you all see that? Yep. 
Okay. Uh, just fill out your name and email and get the guide and they'll send you the PDF. And then if you are interested in digging deeper, they're actually offering 30 minute um, free 30 minute consult coaching calls. And you could just click on this and, um, and schedule that. And I just have to say, even though uh, Missy and Kalisa work in a lot of industries, they've through their friendships with uh, people like Tammy and me, they've worked with a lot of florists. And so they have a, a, a more insight than most uh, social media um, strategists for our, our unique niche in the industry. So um, thank you so much for, for just, just jumping on and sharing that resource and, um, and being with us this morning, Missy. It's great to see you. Yeah. And now I've got to figure out how to get out of this screen thing I've got. Sorry, meeting controls. Stop share. Here we go. I'll get this together by week five or six. Um, okay, uh, Missy, I know you're going to take off. So when you, we're going to say goodbye to you now. Thank you so much okay. for, for all of your wonderful help. Um, yep. Okay, well, I, Missy has actually a paying client who needs her all day on a Zoom coaching. So good for you, Missy. That's awesome. Let's all give her a round of applause. Oh. <laughs> Virtual applause. Um, <laughs> See you guys later. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, so uh, I'm really excited that Amelia from Rooted Farmers could jump on um, and talk with us today and talk a little bit about what they're doing, who Rooted Farmers is, as, you know, as an organization, as a platform and a marketplace for farmers to sell flowers and florists to buy flowers. It's it's so different than Slow Flowers because Slow Flowers functions as a community and a information and content uh, space. I have zero technical skills to ever figure out what Root of Farmers is doing. So I'm really glad that we're partnering with them. And um, I am going to introduce Amelia. She's been a past guest of the podcast and uh, the Root of Farmers has joined the Soul Flower Summit as a, um, our, our, main, our premier sponsor. So we're, we're gonna, you're gonna meet her and meet her team this summer or fall, whenever we have the, the summit. Uh, I'm going to just uh, turn this over to you right now, Amelia, and let you kind of walk people through some of the resources that are available to them. Sure. And thanks so much. Great. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. So, so for those of you who aren't familiar with Rooted Farmers, um, we are a platform, a website um, that uh, works a lot like Etsy, but in um, instead of for crafters, we're really tailored around flower farmers. Um, so, uh, on the farmer side, every farmer sets up their own profile and, um, and they're able to list their inventory. Um, and we take, uh, we take a whole lot of kind of their day-to-day -day, um, task management off of their hands so that they don't need to worry about um, inventory management and, and thinking through the ordering process and coordinating with all of their customers. Um, in the same way that historically they, we have. I, I also am a flower farmer, so I run a farm in rural New Hampshire. Um, we're in zone four, so we've been, um, we've been getting snow every day, which is a little depressing <laughs> this far into the spring. Um, but yeah, so, so, so on the farm side, that's how we work. And then on the um, florist or the designer side, um, the big benefit is that designers are, you know, I guess twofold. Designers, one, are able to shop across uh, multiple farms. So all the farms that they work with in one place, um, as opposed to having to manage all of those relationships separately. Um, and then they also are able to shop in a way that um, has become fairly intuitive um, in the days of kind of internet, you know, internet purchasing. So, you know, if you think about um, what, uh, if you think about what the um, process of shopping on Amazon um, is like, where you can type in what you're looking for and you can filter it um, in, in ways that make sense for whatever the item is that you're searching for, um, we, we allow for that as well. So um, I'm just going to walk through our platform. I'm going to share my screen here so you can actually see because I think it's hard to visualize um, a lot of this without actually being able to see it. Okay, are you able to see my screen now? I'm hoping that's a yes, you're all muted. Yes, okay, good. <laughs> it looks okay. great, it looks great, Amelia. Okay, perfect. So so this is what I see um, as a farmer when I log in. Um, I have two different tabs here. Um, 
what we decided to do was um, begin by uh, only having product for the current week available. And what we have decided to do is, is allow for posting um, future weeks, um, which is technology that we're in the process of building out. So um, for right now, what's available is, is the current week's inventory. Um, and uh, it is very much on our radar that people would like to be order, be able to order farther out um, than, than just you know, the existing week. Um, but this is, this is what we have for right now and we're working on the other. So on the farm side, we have two different tabs here. Um, farmers are able to upload all of their product for the entire year in, um, so you know, right now, if you're um, feeling like you don't have a lot of productive work that you can be doing, which for farmers, um, I think can both be stressful, but also rare, um, this is something that you know is is uh, readily available for you to take on right now. So you can actually build out all of your inventory for the entire year. Um, this is just a sampling of what I would have, and I can hide all of it. So none of this is actually visible to any of my um, any of my buyers right now. And I just can can upload all of this so that I'm able to have it ready for when I am ready to actually sell. Um, if I want to add a new item, I type in what I am listing um, and it auto populates all of the options here. So you can either choose one of these items or um, if you don't want to be that specific for whatever reason, you can just kind of choose that, um, that umbrella category. Um, we have, so, so there are a few fields that we require you to enter and um, the reason is um, in kind of a very short uh, tech explanation, in order to aggregate everything across lots of different farms, the only way to actually do that is to be pulling from our database. Um, so our database is built out and it's a listing of, I don't know how many, we've got over a thousand different cut flowers um, in there. And so you select a flower that exists in our database, which allows on the buyer side for people to search for it. Um, and then you select a price, which allows the, the buyer to know what your stem price is. Um, we do price everything in um, by the stem, but we sell everything in bunches. And then you're required to pick a dominant color for your item. So whatever that color is that you have. Um, and I will put uh, 85 cents here. Um, and then the stem length. So um, we ask you to pick a, a range of stem lengths. And if you would like to provide more information than that, you can. Um, for something like um, dahlias, it might be nice for you to be able to classify, you know, what specifically the, the bloom size is, just because it, it can be tough to tell from the, um, from the scale from the photos. Um, and the vase life is also an option because we found that a lot of florists um, I would guess present company excluded, but a lot of florists who are new to working with local flowers aren't necessarily familiar with a lot of the varieties that we farmers grow. And so they can have a lot of questions around, well, how, you know, if I get this on Wednesday, will it be alive for my event on Saturday? Um, so this can just be a helpful field to populate if it's something um, sort of more, more obscure that people aren't familiar with. And then you can add notes here and, um, and you choose a, a photo. And so you upload your photo of your item um, and then it, you know, it appears here um, and, and you select the quantity that you have available. So that would have been the next if I had completed that one. Um, and, so, and so when you're listing quantities, you list them in bunches and then you, you just decide to make them visible to your buyers. Um, so, so this is on the um, this is on the farm side, and I'll just I'll just move over to the um, buyer side, so you can see what that side looks like. Also, um, and if it makes sense for you to stop me and, and ask questions as I'm walking through things, I'm totally fine with that. But I'll defer to Deborah um, and, and Lisa on, on what uh, what format works. <laughs> just let me know. You know, uh, Deborah here, we haven't seen any questions posted specifically yet. So when they do, I'll let Lisa jump in and, when it's appropriate and ask those. Thanks. That works. Yeah. So, so this is on the buyer side. Um, we found that there were a lot of buyers who had sort of unique questions, um, but weren't so unique that um, nobody else would have had them. So on the farm side, there are a lot of things to us that feel um, uh, just like common sense, um, whereas on the buyer side, they may not all know that there are certain flowers that you can't actually refrigerate, or there are certain flowers that are um, more sensitive to ethylene off-gassing. And so for designers whose shops are either in a shared space, like 
in a market or a bodega where there's off-gassing produce nearby, that's a really important um, attribute to know when they're buying product, especially if it's not something that they've worked with or if they've historically worked with um, wholesalers in the past who have treated product with something like silver nitrate where it, you know, it prevents the absorption of that ethylene that kills the flower. So, um, so, so we have quoted all of that in the back end. That's not something that any of the growers have to worry about. So um, you know, as the buyer goes through, they see, um, they see a variety of icons here that, that, and here's the legend here just to kind of um, highlight that. So um, they are able to see if our members are Slow Flowers members. So um, that, is, uh, that is available for them on, on every listing. If there were a number of farms on this page, um, then they would see um, across all of the farms the same information. If they want to search just from my profile and only shop from my farm or whoever's farm, they can do that just by clicking here. Um, and then they're able to see what the options are for delivery or for pickup for this particular farm. So that's something that we said on the farm side. And I can go back to that because I just realized I skipped over that. Um, but but if, they, if they want to place an order, they can do that here. Um, and they're able, they're also able to sort um, by you know, by color, if they just are looking for something pink, they can search for something pink. Um, if you are searching for a design element and you just know that you really need an airy element and you don't have a specific idea in mind of what you're looking for, um, then you can search in terms of that or foliage or whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, you can search for a specific flower here. Um, and we code everything by, so, so one of the benefits of having a database um, populating all of this is that we can populate all of the common names. So um, we get around that problem of uh, a grower calling something by its botanical name and a florist saying, you know, what's that pink thing that I need? <laughs> um, or what, you know, I'm, I'm looking for yarrow and the, and the, um, and the grower is calling it by, by a botanical name or, or, you know, a different common name. So, um, so those are all listed here. And what ended up happening was it just made um, for shopping to be really quick and easy. And the buyers were able to say very quickly, you know, blow up an image of the flower, say, gosh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, and then they're able to place their order without having a whole lot of back and forth, which takes a lot of, um, frees up a lot of time on the buyer side too because the designers are no longer having to kind of either guess at answers to their questions or, you know, ask the same questions across lots of different, um, lots of different farms. So they're able to place the orders here. Um, and then they, they go to their checkout <coughs> and they can see what the options are. They can amend the order here. Um, they can, decide which they would like to choose for their delivery. So they can select if they want um, pickup or delivery. Um, if there is a delivery fee associated with that, um, with that order, then it would show up here also. Um, and if there's no delivery fee, sorry, this is, we've got this on our development site and I set the date backwards a couple of days so that we would be able to do it. Um, and I think it didn't flow through to the entire site. Um, but that's, that's where they would place the order. They would select the date and then finalize the order. Payment is not processed until uh, the order is actually delivered. So no payment is transferred until somebody actually shows up with the flowers or you go to the farm and you show up um, with, uh, to, to pick up the flowers and you process um, on, on that side. Does that make sense? Do, we, do you want me to pause it all for questions or are you okay? We do have some questions, but I can let you um, finish your thought. Okay, uh, so, so I'm back on the farm side here. Um, what the only piece that we really skipped over on the farm side was um, how you manage your customers. So um, on, the, on the farm side, these are, um, this is again, my development site. So these are not all real, far, real designers, but some of them are. Um, but the, the way that you would work around, um, you know, each of these is um, to say, so, so let's say I only wanted to work with my local customers and I didn't want to deliver down to my Boston folks, then I would make it so that none of my inventory is visible to my Boston folks here. Um, or, you know, only want to work with one particular florist this week for whatever reason, um, and I'm deciding to only work with that one. So 
Um, then within there, um, I select my delivery days and um, whether or not I want to allow for pickup um, and all of the options there. And so that's what the buyer sees on their side when they're actually going through to make their selections. Um, yeah, I think I can I can pause there for questions and then I can kind of be more specific where it makes sense. Um, but that's that's a good overview of, of um, most of the site's functionality for now. Um, so just let me know what, what the questions are and I can start there. Uh, I'm gonna jump in, this is Deborah. Can you just talk a little bit about uh, what you're offering to Slothar's members for, um, for joining Rooted Farmers? And we're talking about the farmer side and then also talk about what the florists can how they can uh, benefit from this. Sure. So um, on the farmer side, if you are a Slow Flowers member, um, we have free subscriptions for you for the year. So um, there is typically a $250 subscription fee um, when you sign up and that is waived for you for the first year. Um, so we are excited yeah. about that partnership and, like, and excited great. to bring this to Slow Flowers members. Um, and then on the buyer side, there is no cost um, to, to becoming a member, we do ask that you go through an application process. And the reason that that's important is that we really wanna make sure that we're not um, skirting that wholesale uh, relationship with the florist by letting people on who are um, maybe DIY brides and wanting to just buy things at cost because that um, that doesn't work out well for the for the florists who are partnered with us. And it also um, and can, can not work out well for some of the farms. So, um, so it is an application process, but it is um, free. There's no cost to, to joining. Great. Um, let's see. Can we let go back to maybe the homepage? And then, um, Lisa, I think there's a few questions you want to maybe throw them out to. Yes. Um, Karen, if you're out there, could you unmute um, Kirsten Gordon, please? She has a number of good questions for Amelia. Um, hi, it's Kirsten. Uh, I'm, I'm looking from being a florist to purchasing, um, just wanting to understand some of the ins and outs. Uh, I love the consolidation. I love um, what you're doing with the pictures and um, making this really easy for us to drill down quickly. Um, what happens in the event that, say, we, we place an order that comes from three different um, farms and the material is delivered to me here in the Chicago area and some of it's dead. Who do I go to? Do I go back to Rooted Farmer? Do I then run out to my wholesaler because I need more? Do I order a little bit early so that I have time in case there's a replacement that needs to be made? So um, if you are getting the order directly from the, um, from the grower who grew it and they are delivering it right to you, is that how you typically work or do you typically work in a different way? I want to make sure I'm answering your question as it makes sense to you. Um, I typically work either through wholesale or my own cutting garden or directly with a grower. Okay. So this consolidated platform and the idea that I might place an order that could potentially come from two or three different growers and yep. is, is that, is that, how, am I understanding that right? Or if, yes. if I'm doing an order from three different growers, is it coming in three different boxes, but you are, you know, organizing that effort? So if you're ordering from three different growers and they are not selling through a wholesaler, I'll answer it in that scenario first. So, so if you're order, working directly with the growers and you place an order here across three different growers, then it comes from each of those growers. So um, you would select among their delivery dates for each of those orders. So when you get to your cart page, instead of seeing um, just the one order for the one farm, which is what I showed you, you would actually see um, the three different orders from the three different farms. And for each of those farm orders, you would select the appropriate delivery days from that farmer. Does that make sense? So the farm is gonna actually come and bring you the product and they will deliver their items to you. Um, we don't ship product, so that's not an option 
for this platform, but if you're working with farmers who are in proximity to you and they're delivering product to you, um, then you just select your delivery day. Now, if they show up and they are handing you product and you're like, gosh, this is dead. I can't use this. This is, I'm not gonna pay for this. That's part of the order fulfillment process where you would actually select that on, um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pull. So, so um, if we go back and look at um, a previous order, I, I can't pull it up here because I don't have a current order, but essentially you, there's a fulfillment area where you confirm that yes, you received these items. And as soon as you confirm that, then the charge goes through. If you say, no, I didn't receive this, it never showed up, or I received this, it's really poor quality and I don't think I should pay for it, so I'm not actually taking it, then you make that adjustment also. So, and, and or on, you know, on, on the flip side of that is if the grower shows up and they say, hey, I know you only ordered five bunches of these tulips, but actually I had 10, so I thought I'd just bring them in case you wanted more, you can increase the order there right on site too. So you can just up, adjust that upward um, at the same time. Okay, um, let's get to one more question and then we're gonna have to, um, I know Amelia has one more thing she wants to share. So I wanna make sure, <laughs> excuse okay. me, we allow time for that. Um, forgive me if I'm sharing questions that she's already answered, but I'm um, reading the chat and not paying attention as I should be. But um, I, Amelia, I'm going to give you some rapid fire questions. Okay. Um, this, I know we only have a few minutes left. So um, firstly, um, there are a couple questions about how do we get florists and designers to sign up um, and how do, how do, um, the, do we get them to join? Um, uh, what if uh, a farmer is growing something that's not on the database? Um, what if um, the flowers they're growing are so new that they don't have photos for them yet? Um, and uh, what sort of uh, photo rights um, are we handing over if we give you our photos? And um, I'm not going to remember if you ask me more questions. Okay. Than okay. That, so <laughs> okay. So, I'll hang out over um, there. Okay, so if you want to join, just go to rootedfarmers.com and you select for farmers, you select join, same thing for florists, you select join. This is the application. Um, the only, you know, the, big, the biggest difference for florists is we do ask that you upload a copy of your reseller certificate right here. Um, that is so that we don't have to charge you sales tax. So that's the big difference between the two applications. Um, if you are growing something that we don't have, send us an email. And as long as it's like an actual legitimate flower, um, we want to be careful about things um, that uh, are being bred by growers and maybe aren't recognized as an official breed of that flower. So that's the only thing that we're really kind of carefully watching. I know there are, my sense is that there are a lot of politics, especially around things like Dahlia. So, so um, as long as it's an actual legitimate breed, we can add it to our database, no problem. That takes just a few seconds. Um, if the item is so new that you don't have a photo for it, what I would say is um, when you are uploading your, your um, item, put in there, you always have the option to swap out the photo. So just put in a placeholder for a photo um, and, uh, and, and say, you know, no photo available and, and that's fine too. Um, the downside is you make the item visible and the florists are looking at it and they see there's no photo available. They can say, well, I'd really like to see what this looks like before I buy it. And so they may just pass over you, um, but it, you, know, you, can, you can just put in a placeholder for that for now. Um, photo rights, we do not own the rights to your photos as part of our terms of use. Um, all of the photos are yours, you own the rights and, um, and, uh, and you give us the right to use them for marketing purposes. And what that means is we're allowed to post them so that the florist can actually see it. Um, if you don't sign that, then we can't actually use any of your pictures to show to your buyers, but we do not take any of the rights of the photos. That's explicitly written out there. Oh, that's okay, that's great. all Thanks. the questions I remember, but I have time to answer more if you have more. <laughs> also, people can reach out to you personally and we'll um, maybe in the group chat, um, you can post the best email that you prefer people to use. Um, yeah. Before we wrap up on this section um, with Amelia, she's got a kind of a cool new project that they're doing at Rooted Farmers. It is kind of recognizing the fact that some florists <laughs> and farmers are choosing not to do, uh, you know, no can't no contact delivery so uh i'd love to have you just briefly touch on that amelia 
Yeah, so so um, there's a lot of uh, I think among in our industry, both on the farm side and on the um, on the designer side of of the the morality of delivering flowers right now, and I think that's a really hard um, subject to dig into. Um, but we are, uh, we would like to be helpful. Um, so, so one of the things that we decided that we would do um, is to look at building out basically virtual flower bouquets. Um, and this is something that our farms were excited about um, and, uh, and that we were really excited to bring to them. So, so these are called farmograms. Um, they are free. They cost nothing to actually send and use um, and they're open to all of our farms. Um, so any any farms on our platform who are members of Rooted are able to put their um, put their uh, bouquets up here. So they send us a copy, of, you know, an image of their bouquet. Um, same thing. We don't own the rights to the photos. We just you're basically giving us licensing rights, um, and we put it up here. And then if you are, and and this is open to the general public. This is a public site. You go to farmergrams.com. Um, it redirects you to this site, and um, and you select. Uh, you select one of these. Um, this is from Mara um, at the farm at Oxford. Um, and so, so actually go on to the page. You can see an image of the, of, the, um, of the bouquet. You can see a little bit about the farm and then you can send a message to somebody that you're thinking about um, and let them know that you're thinking about them. And so um, uh, there's also an option to support the farm. So farms are obviously small businesses. Um, and they're hurting right now too. And so if the user wants to, um, what we do on the back end is we link it to your Stripe account if you're one of our farms, which we have already um, linked or rooted. Um, so if, if you're one of our farms, they have the option to, uh, to give you a donation as part of this. Um, and so what we're seeing is, you know, folks coming in and donating $1, $5, or they can pick an amount that they want. Um, rooted does not take any fees from this. We aren't making any money off of this. Um, Stripe takes their regular fees, but um, but yeah, that's that is what the process is. So um, so you can send a note to somebody you love. It ends up in their inbox. They get a really cute email that says you know someone's thinking of you, and it and it populates all the information. So it's very personal, um, and uh, and then they 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 get a note back, and and you get a note confirmed. Actually, did send this to them so that you get you can see that this went through. Um, and thank you, and just thanking you for supporting small farms and, and the local flower movement right now. Thanks, Amelia. This is fantastic, and um, I hope everyone can take advantage of it. And I love the fact that it uh, kind of educates um, anybody who comes to the Farmagram site that that farmers are trying to sustain their businesses, and even a small donation will be welcome. So it's like a tip jar almost. Um, one, I have one final question before I let you, we wrap up with Amelia and uh, maybe we'll have to um, let some of the people reach out to you personally uh, with sure. questions. And is there a way for, uh, not, not on the farmer grams, but on rooted farmers, is there a way for the farm to indicate whether they're willing to ship if they're not in the location of where the florist buyer is? Like Kristen at, or Kirsten in Chicago, if she wants to buy from, you know, Mara in Pennsylvania, can Mara say whether she's willing to ship or not? Um, it's not functionality that we have built right now. Um, that's not to say that it's not possible for us to do it. I think I would want to do a little bit more digging to make sure that I was answering that intelligently. And, um, you know, I think just on the, um, just off the top of my head, I think, you know, we'd obviously need to build in a calculator so that if um, uh, unless we just kind of use, I'm, I'm honestly just like stream of consciousness right now. Um, and is it possible the, for, yeah, is it possible for like the a delivery fee? Is it possible for the, um, the purchaser to just direct message the farmer and ask and not, you know, once, once that's connected? Yeah, so, so the missing piece would be charging for, um, ch charging for it. So, um, and, yeah, the, the missing piece would be allowing a charge for it, and um, we could build that. I guess you know, I guess if in theory they wanted to kind of like Jerry rig a way to do it, they could use a delivery fee and just have a flat fee and say, you know, your delivery fee for this week is twenty five dollars or whatever they're charging for shipping. 
um, and and manage it that way. So yeah, you know, okay. they could. They okay. Could. All yeah. right. We'll try to get a little more information on that and suggestions when Amelia has time to think through that. There are a few more questions and I think uh, I'm going to encourage people to, um, to reach out to you directly. Would you tell uh, Karen what email you want people to reach out to you at? Uh, sure. Okay. Great. So, so if you use reach out, R E A C H O U T at rootedfarmers.com, um, one of us will get back to you. Um, but yeah, there, there are a few of us fielding emails right now. Good. We'll put that in the chat. Oh, Karen just did it. Huh, she's so much faster than me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amelia. Um, we're going to, uh, we have so many questions. I want to just uh, do a little housekeeping and then Elise is going to manage a few questions on weddings that will open it up to the group. Um, last week we did uh, some giveaways and um, Nisha has um, posted the winners. We had, um, we gave away uh, uh, some three cool gifts. And so if you want to be in the drawing for this week, you absolutely have to go into your uh, participant profile and put your name there. If there's just a first name, like I see a Diana, I see a, an April, we don't know who you are. You won't, we won't be able to let you know if you won on that drawing. So we have three giveaways this week. We're going to of course do another set of my books. The, you can tell I got a lot of inventory to get rid of. Slow Flowers and the 50 Mile Bouquet. Uh, that's one. We're all, and we're going to do all these drawings after the meeting and then let people know. We have another fabulous Seattle Wholesale Growers Market beanie, Carhartt, made in the USA. This has got pink uh, stitching, which is really cute. And then I have um, a, a trio set of Holly Chapel pillows that uh, will be really fun for foam-free floral design, recyclable and reusable. Uh, so those are three gifts and then everybody, each one of those three winners is also going to receive our custom pack of seeds that Johnny's created last year with the photo shoot for American Flowers Week that uh, our friend Rain, who's on this call, designed. Hi, Rain. Isn't that fun to see? And this includes um, uh, a Ring of Fire sunflower pack, a, a zinnia, Two different zinnia mixes, jazzy mix and sumbo mix, and then uh, the Dara carrot flower. So everybody's going to get that. So we just want to share our love and appreciation for you all participating this week and uh, make it a little fun. So we'll do the drawing uh, and announce that early next week. Uh, next week, I think uh, I, I want to just throw out to the group. Please message me on the on the chat if you're interested. We want to try the Zoom um, breakout session platform which allows smaller groups that can can get together and talk about specific topics. We'll probably just do three topics because that seems like a lot to take on. But I need to test this with a group of people sometime next week. So if you're interested in being kind of our guinea pigs to walk through just the platform and how to do the breakout groups, I need about five or six people to give me, you know, like 30 minutes. Uh, message me if you're interested and we'll follow up with you on that. There's so many cap capabilities of creating connections and I don't want this to just be one way like it was today. Um, but we have almost, I think, 40 people on this call. So um, we just decided to, to set it up with guest speakers this week, but next week we'd like to have it be more interactive. So yeah, message me and it looks like a few people have already said they are happy to do Zoom breakouts. Great. I've got a few escapees from the corporate world who know how to do this. Um, before we wrap up, could, uh, let's see, Lisa, do you want to um, moderate a little bit on the, um, uh, some of these wedding questions? And um, next week for sure we'll have a wedding uh, category in the breakout rooms because it's a, it's a big issue both for farm, farmer florists and for, uh, and for florists. Uh, before we get to the wedding um, questions, I just wanted to repost something that Sylvia shared at the beginning of this call. Um, and uh, Karen, I think you are ready to unmute her so she can explain this to anyone with a Chase uh, checking account. Hi, I saw I'd been unmuted and thought it was some sort of, sort of mistake. So <laughs> there might be a lot of banging in the background. Um, hi, I, just, I think there's been a lot of question in general and conversation around how does one apply for funding as a small business and there are various packages available. Um, I'm sure you all know about those, but um, for the small, small business association loans, they are being done through banks. And I had just mentioned that anyone who is with Chase 
it is supposed to be live on their site as of 12 p.m. today, but the site is crashing, um, not surprisingly. So I think that does mean for, you know, speak to your banker, whoever that is, to see um, if and what is available to you, should it be helpful. Great. Sylvia, may I just clarify too, that's for the paycheck protection loans that are through banks. Those are different than the disaster relief loans that are through the SBA. So just want to make sure you guys know there's multiple different components Correct. to the full stimulus package. What yeah. Sylvia is talking about is for the paycheck, paycheck protection loan, which Correct. was mentioned actually on this call last week too. Yeah, but I do want to be clear, they are both funded through the SBA, um, but the PPP is being distributed through banks. So... Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, let's talk about a few wedding questions and then we'll uh, wrap up. And I hope to see you all again um, next Friday, same time, same place on the 10th. And um, we'll announce our drawing giveaways uh, early next week. Uh, this has been wonderful. I value all of you. Uh, having Missy on and Amelia on has been really a great bonus today. And I'm taking notes of all the people who are. Uh, volunteering to be on our breakup sessions, a uh, breakout session test. So uh, we'll follow up with you. Okay, um, Lisa, I'm going to let you manage the a few wedding questions. And if if I guess, how do you want people to answer? Raise their hand if they have an answer or a comment. Sure, we'll try that. <laughs> All right, go for, go for it. Um, so, uh, uh, Kirsten, you had a couple comments earlier about. Um, how to manage brides rescheduling and your calendar and especially if you're growing flowers specifically for them. I just unmuted you. Do you want to say a little bit more about that? Uh, sure. I, I, I think that um, what I'm seeing in terms of looking at it on a more academic or database kind of way is that the nation is showing us that nine out of 10 couples are pushing their spring or early summer wedding into the fall. So that's great, but I, I still have several clients in that spring and early summer camp that haven't decided what to do. And the reality for me is that I, I'm not gonna be able to do five weddings in a weekend in the fall. So at some point, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm sitting here waiting for them to make decisions. And the longer I wait, the, the more scarce my availability becomes. Mm -hmm. So just, I, if anybody has a, a thought on, you know, how do, how do we florists dig out of this? <laughs> <laughs> Who has the answer? <laughs> uh, Rebecca Lane has a, uh, uh, a comment. Uh, let me unmute Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Um, I'm from Meadow Wilds. I just have a thought. Um, like I have a May bride, May 23rd, who's postponing. And she just sent an email listing like five um, top priority of her dates that are, you know, the best for them. And she's sending it out to all of her vendors to see because obviously she's trying to keep the integrity to keep the team together. And a lot of the dates that she chose are off weekend dates. So they're Mondays, they're Tuesdays, they're Sundays. Um, because, you know, obviously a lot of people will be booked, but I'm also having the same thing where a May 23rd wedding is moving to potentially an October 15th wedding. And we've already finished all of our proposal work and we've already done our allotted calls. So I already let her know that any additional planning that we're gonna have to do, you know, I'm going to charge you know, a consultation price or an hourly wage for any additional calls because obviously the flowers will be different, the colors might be different. So we have to plan, you have to get charged for the more time, mm -hmm. right? taking a lot of my time. So I think I would encourage them to see if they can give you options of, you know, dates to choose from and don't plan to do it in off season times. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Rebecca. I see that um, Joni from Best Buds Flower Farm had her hand up. Should we take yeah. her off of mute? Okay. I did. I think I'm off mute now. <laughs> so one of my ideas is I'm in zone six and I'm about three years into flower farming. This is 
one of my semi-retirement side gigs. And I'm really excited. I've done a little bit of design work um, and really enjoyed that. Learned a lot from listening to Slow Flowers. But it might be a really interesting time to partner with someone who's still starting things for fall. Like my dahlias, I'm sprouting them right now. But I could still widen my bandwidth on dahlias for September, October weddings right now. So it may be coordinating with growers who can still um, produce more and also do some design work with you. So it might be a great partnership opportunity. I think, you know, I've, um, I own a yoga business in the barn on my property. And what I found in this online world of putting my classes mm -hmm. online is we now have people from Florida and Ireland taking our classes. So there are always opportunities worked into these different situations. And this might be one of them where you find one or two farmers or other florists who are more farmer florists who want to coordinate with you. Okay, thank you, Joni. That's great. Uh, Lisa, any more questions or should we kind of, or do one more and then say goodbye to everybody? It's 10.01. I don't want to go, oh, Kate from Chatham Flower Farm has her hand raised. Can we ask her to talk? Uh, Pilar, did you want to share your thoughts while I'm looking <laughs> for Kate? <laughs> oh, here we are. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just saying, you know, I still have some availability I tend to not do very many events, but I foresee that happening, kind of building up for me in the fall. So there are some of us who do have availability. And I think, um, you know, because maybe you've already done a lot of the work, like getting, obviously making a connection and booking someone, creating a design plan, then figuring out a way, if you can't do it and can't reschedule them to on your books, maybe sharing with someone else, but still maybe getting compensated for the work you put in. Um, I think that that, you know, making sure it's fair for everybody and knowing that like, you know, it's the same idea. We're kind of all experiencing this together. And I think it's also really good because maybe that will also change the dynamic of even just how we are, what our future looks like. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we'll start to be a little bit more collaborative. I think that, you know, who knows it could change the way society works but um in the meantime that could be you know i think opening it up and, and releasing some of that like oh it's mine and being like oh somebody else could do this i can still make money for my time that kind of thing so great thank you um okay and we did you figure out where kate is uh okay hi can you hear me yeah yes I can hear you. Um, so kind of, kind of to touch base on what we were talking about with the collaboration and, um, we've had two weddings that have postponed into the fall, um, into October, unfortunately, because we have a benefit at that same time. One of those weddings went to a midweek wedding and the bride was just thankful to be able to, um, one, continue to use our services, but also our property because we host some of those weddings here. Um, and then we also are collaborating with other flower farmers um, in the Eastern shore of Maryland. I'm in the Eastern shore of Virginia. There's also a flower farmer here that we've talked to, but also veg farmers. Um, a lot of the veg farmers have grow quite a bit of flowers. Um, so maybe if it's something that I'm not gonna have a lot of, like snapdragons this year i've kind of pushed those out um because we tripled our dahlia uh growing this year uh i've reached out to veg farmers to get those flowers from them but also i e emailed all my basically an artist palette list of what i'm projecting for the fall to give them an option to change some colors or pick different colors that might go with their wedding palette. And be um, really well received. Uh, and then we just offered because of the to kind of touch base on the added, the added cost for us to um, we are just charging a $50 fee for that, a based fee to not add. We get something out of it 
but we're not trying to, yeah. you know, add more. so I'm certain I would rather have the business and make the wed make yeah. the bride happy than. Kate, Kate, I'm going to have to mute you because Kate, it's Deborah here. I'm gonna have to, your audio is really bad and we can't really hear everything you're saying. So I think we got the gist and I apologize. They're just really bad audio uh, on the, on the, um, this, whatever on your device. So I apologize for that to cut you off, but thank you for, for sharing. Uh, everybody, uh, I think we're going to wrap up. I want to thank you all for being part of this. It's just beautiful to see your faces and to feel like we're not alone. Um, I, I was particularly moved this week when I did have uh, Tammy Myers uh, from B Laura Bloom on uh, the Slow Flowers podcast as sort of our Stories of Resilience guest. And if you want to go back and listen to that, it was the April 1st episode. And Tammy really got me thinking about uh, trying to drill down just like three simple things that we can all do to feel like uh, we're not spinning out of control and, and just breaking those down. Um, I'm looking for my notes where I wrote them down. So I'm going to say these from memory, but uh, really it boiled down to like, um, just keep talking, stay connected with your customers, with your peers, with your community, and don't go silent. The second was maybe take some great projects that have been on the back burner or on your wish list to do, um, revive those and, um, you know, give yourself uh, the luxury of all this extra time you have to tackle something like that. And um, Tammy, I can't remember what the third one is, but I think it was the social media calendar that you started working on uh, to, I guess, revive uh, your, uh, your normalcy in your calendar, if you could just do one thing a day. So I, <laughs> I'm really grateful that she said that to me. It kind of inspired this whole project that we did to invite, um, Missy onto, uh, onto the Slow Fires platform to share the social media calendar. So I'm thrilled with that. So when we're, we're going to wrap up now, I've taken notes of everybody who said they're going to uh, be willing to tr do a practice Zoom chat and we'll reach out to you personally. I'm grateful for that. And uh, I'll, I, I'll uh, see you all hopefully in a week. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. And Take we'll care, we'll everybody. try to we'll try to share the recording of this too.